If you were trapped in a dorm building with a mysterious psycho who was out for revenge, what would you do? This group of students has something to hide, and soon, getting into college is going to be the least of their worries. I'm here to break down the mistakes made, what you should do, and how to beat the revenge killer in Death Bell 2. <laughs> These students are about to have a summer break from hell. It's the end of the year at this high school, and the seniors are taking their final exams. This girl, Naray, bubbles in the answers randomly, finishing up in just a couple of minutes before laying down to take a nap. Later that day, Naray quits her spot on the swim team, and the coach gives her a hard time about her chances of getting into college. Meanwhile, this creepy kid, Wan Hu, takes pictures of the girls in their bikinis from up on the viewing platform. While the kids head back to their classrooms, new teacher, Mr. Mrs. Park runs into this creepy professor who asks her out for a drink. She ducks into the ladies' room to get away from him, practicing starting class in the mirror before going in for her own evaluation. The class begins with a lesson on the code of the Hammurabi, but while she's busy talking, the kids start to hand around a photoshopped picture of her with the creepy professor, passing it back until it gets to Wo Hun and the class clown, JK, and she realizes that he's hiding something in his hand. After seeing what it is, she crumbles it up in embarrassment. The kids laughing at her as their teacher yells at them to be quiet. Later that day, an older boy in their class, Quan Wu, throws a carton of milk at this girl, Jin Yoon, but she dodges it instead of catching it, and it nails this quiet kid, Si He, right in the face. Ji Yoon and the other kids laugh, but he feels sorry for the accident and hands her a napkin before taking his seat as Mr. Cha walks into the classroom. The teacher congratulates them on making it to summer break, but takes a moment to warn the students not to fool around and get into any trouble, since the way that they behave over the vacation will play a huge role in determining their futures. Before sending them out, he mentions that the top 30 students will have to report for advanced classes in the dorms starting the next day, and their positions are posted in the hallway outside. They don't know it yet, but this is a list that they definitely don't want to be on. The kids go to see where they stand, with Ji Yoon and Sui Il taking the top two spots. See, he sees that she came in a respectable 25th, and Nare was added to the list as a special member. She calls the mother on her phone, furious that she'd sign her up for extra studying, but the decision is final, and she'll have to report for classes with the others the next day. See, he returns to her house for the night. As she's packing her clothes, she has a vision of another girl sitting in her room playing the piano. Suddenly, see, he feels like something's wrong and looks over to see that the girl's hands have morphed into a pair of revolting, demonic claws. The girl turns to look at her, but that's going to be difficult since she doesn't have any eyes. The shock of the situation makes Si He experience brief visions of her past, only to wake up at her desk later that night, a single strand of long, dark hair and some water droplets mysteriously appearing on the piano keys behind her. The next morning, JK and Young Ran pull up on his motorcycle as the rest of the kids all arrive at the dorm for their advanced classes. The creepy professor greets the students and says that it's time for the real game to begin. Now that they're competing to get the best spots at university, they're no longer friends, but rivals, and whoever works the hardest will win. With the pep talk over, he instructs the students to hand their phones to Miss Park, and she walks around the room collecting them all into a box. Class starts, and the professors push the students through the whole day, working them hard until way after sunset as they struggle to stay awake and focused. That night, the three teachers sit down to discuss how the day went. The creepy guy tells the others that he has something important to do and is leaving them to watch the kids, promising to lock all of the doors on his way out so that nobody goes missing. The other two reluctantly agree, but they have no idea that they should be running for their lives while they still have a chance. Up in the dorm room, one of the girls starts to talk about a rumor going around that their classmates saw a ghost with long black hair crawling around like a spider across the bottom of the swimming pool. She struggles to remember who the ghost girl was, with Naray chiming in that her her name was Taeyeon, her old friend and the school's top swimmer. This girl, hyun -A, shouts at them to stop and storms out of the room. Overwhelmed with anxiety, hyun -A decides to head to the bathroom and take some medication, but that's when long black hair starts to grow all over her body, and a massive surge of blood rains down on her head. She screams in terror, only to realize that it was all in her imagination, and in reality, she's perfectly fine. 
Okay, somebody needs to give these kids a break before one of them snaps. They're only one day into advanced classes and they've already got people seeing geysers of blood and ghost girls in the swimming pool. The real danger hasn't even started yet, but these poor students are already at their wits end. And that's not a good mindset to be in once the death game begins. So far, both Hyun A and Si He have experienced some pretty extreme hallucinations. These could be signs of ghostly possession, but a more logical explanation is that they're simply experiencing symptoms of extreme anxiety and sleep deprivation from the pressure to succeed at school. The professor outright encouraged them to get as little sleep as possible and kept them in the classroom late into the night, but studies show that this kind of behavior is actually extremely unhealthy for people of their age. School-aged kids need a minimum of eight hours of sleep every night if they want to be operating at their best of their ability. Pushing themselves to study all night will only lead to sleep deprivation, which can cause hallucinations just like what's been happening to see he and Hyun A. Until they've gotten the appropriate amount of rest, we can't say for sure that everything that's happening doesn't only exist in their heads. Just put down the books and get a good night's sleep. Now, although it could be from stress, it's important to wonder why Hyun A in particular was so freaked out when the girl Tae Yeon got brought up. It might just be that she's really scared of ghost stories, which is understandable for a kid her age, but there's also a chance that she has something to hide, and if things start getting crazy, I'd be keeping a close eye on her to try and figure out what she knows. Their summer classes are off to a rough start, but things are going to get even worse before the night is over. With the students settled in for the night, the professor heads around and locks up the exits. Before leaving, he decides to make a quick pit stop at the pool and creep on the swim coach who's there doing her laps. She shouts at him for sneaking up on her and climbs out of the pool, retreating into the showers to get away from him. As she's washing up, she hears a noise from out in the hall and thinks that it must be the creepy guy trying to sneak another peek. Frustrated, she decides to ignore him, but that's when the lights mysteriously cut out. She sneaks out of the room, making her way down down the hall until suddenly someone shines a flashlight right in her face and slams her head into the mirror, killing her. Meanwhile, Young Ran sneaks out of her room and goes to find JK for some birthday romance in the storage closet. She gets to the meeting spot, but the room is dark, and when she calls out for her man, she gets no response. Just as she starts to get worried, some guy in a mask grabs her and pushes her up against the wall, but it's only JK pulling a prank. The creepy professor finally locks up for the night, but the terror is just about to begin. Somewhere in the darkness, the killer seems to have gotten the jump on one of the girls and stitches something into her face, her screams going unheard by anyone in the empty halls. As the clock strikes midnight, classical music starts playing through the intercom, and the students wake up at their desks. Looking around the room, they see that while they were asleep, someone posted a strange message about revenge on the wall. Hyun A feels something drop on her head and notices blood seeping through the cracks in the ceiling right above her. Suddenly, the ceiling bursts open, and Young Ran crashes through hanging upside down by a rope. Before the rest of them can even figure out what's going on, a piercing, high-pitched noise plays over the intercom, and a voice tells them something that you never want to hear. From now on, they're trapped in a death game. One by one, some of them will die, and their job is to figure out who's doing the killing and why. Only the ones who figure it out get to leave alive. The noise plays again, and that's when young Ran starts to cough up blood, showing that she's not quite dead yet. She begs the others for help, and that's when some Someone cuts the rope, sending her crashing down onto a desk and breaking her neck from the fall. The rest of the students stampede down the stairs, trampling each other as they rush for the exit, where they realize with horror that they've all been locked inside. Panicking, they run to check the other doors, but no matter what they try, nothing is open. Okay, you've just found out that a maniac is coming after you and your friends. There's no place to run and no way to tell who will be the next target, so what do you do? You could just play along with the game and hope for the best, but even then, there's no guarantee that they'll let you go free when it's all over. So instead, it's time to come up with a plan and fight back. Everyone in the class needs a randomly chosen partner that they'll have to stick with at all times. And if anyone's caught without their partner, they both jump right to the top of the list of suspects. Once everyone has their buddy, it's time to divide and conquer. You'll have to act fast, because how you spend the next few hours will determine who gets to make it out alive. The next step should be to 
work on your escape, and these kids actually have a major advantage when it comes to this. They're all students, which means that they already have some decent knowledge of the building's layout. After heading to the kitchen and arming themselves with anything that they can use to fight back, they should strategically go from exit to exit and find one that looks the least structurally sound. Whether it's one of the main doors or even the windows, there has to be a weak point that they could focus their efforts on breaking through and making it to the outside. Since the doors are locked, but they're still able to get to the first floor, I'd start with trying to break out of one of the windows and move on to a different strategy if that didn't work. For example, the first exit that they tried seems to be a glass door that's locked with a chain and backed up by a retractable security gate on the other side. This kid tried to kick his way out, and after that didn't work, the whole group just gave up and moved on. If they could just find some tools like a crowbar or hammers in the equipment closet, they might just be able to break the padlock on the first door or shatter the glass. Their friend Young Ran was tied up with a rope, which they could also use as a tool for getting out tying it around the door handles, and having the strongest kids try to pull on it hard enough to break through. They still have the option of hunting the killer down and turning the tables before he has the chance to pick them off one at a time. The students should start by splitting up into two big groups, and then head to opposite sides of the building before sweeping the place room by room and gradually working their way towards each other, stationing at least two guards at every exit that they come across, just in case the killer tries to sneak out. As they work their way through the building, the killer will either have to confront them or continue to run and hide. Then all that's left to do is hit that freak with a beatdown so bad that they regret ever being born, and once they're incapacitated, even if they don't have the keys and you still can't get out, at least you'll know that you're safe to wait until morning for help to arrive. Unfortunately for these kids, they're not the best at teamwork, but they're going to have to figure it out by the end of the night if any of them want to stand a chance. The students gather in the hallway, and Miss Park says that she'll go find Mr. Cha to see if he has the keys, warning the kids to stay put and not split up. Before she can go, the monitor on the wall starts to show security camera footage of a guy laying in the middle of the floor somewhere else in the school. It's JK, and he wakes up with a blinding light in his face. He looks to the end of the hall and sees somebody sitting on his motorcycle, now with a bunch of huge blades attached to the front wheel. Furious that someone would touch his bike, JK rushes towards them, but that was his biggest mistake. The killer speeds down the hall, slicing open his leg and knocking him to the floor. Struggling to his feet, JK tries to make a run for it, but this time the killer pops a sick wheelie, ripping into the side of his neck and face with the blades. It's over for JK, but the killer isn't done yet. Speeding back and forth down the hall until finally finishing him off. Okay, JK here thought he was the coolest guy in school, but it looks like this maniac on a motorcycle just cut him down to size. Instead of just running in a straight line down the hallway, how about actually doing something to fight back? A crazy person riding a motorcycle in a tight corridor where they can only drive in two directions is actually more vulnerable than you think. Their only method of attack is to use the spinning blades attached to the front wheel, so if you focus on those instead of panicking, you just might be able to win this battle. They'll have to commit to either wheeling up and going high or keeping both wheels on the floor and going for your legs. And that's when you need to dodge low into the side. Even if you can't knock them down on the first pass, they'll have to turn around before they can come at you again. And that's when you climb up on one of the window sills or something and get your ankles out of the blades' reach. When it comes to the rest of the kids, instead of just standing there and watching with horror as your friend is mowed down, now would be the time to take some action. They know the layout of the school, and based on what they see from the security camera, they should be able to figure out where the killer and JK are having their battle, even if they can't figure it out by sight alone. Motorcycles are pretty loud, so they could just follow the noise right to where the attack is happening. With JK Road killed, the death toll is starting to creep up, and the rest of them better come up with a plan and fast. The kids start to panic as they realize that any of them could be next, and hyun screams that the killer must be the ghost of Taeyeon back to get her revenge. Just then, Mr. Cha rushes into the hall, suspiciously appearing right after the boy was killed. The students tell him that two of their friends are dead and beg him to open the doors, but he says that only the creepy professor has the keys, and he can't get any signal on his phone to call for help. Trying to maintain control of the situation, he tells everyone to go back to the classroom and 
stick with Miss Park while he tries to figure out what to do next. He and another student head to an office and try all of the phones and computers, but it looks like someone's cut the cables, leaving them with no connection to the outside world. Back in the classroom, Hyung A takes more of her medication while the other girls discuss rumors surrounding Tae Yeon's death. This kid walks up and says that they're all idiots, pointing out that ghosts can't ride motorcycles and arguing that it's just some sicko playing a twisted game. He starts trying to come up with a suspect, demanding that everyone look around the room and figure out who's there that wasn't in the hallway before, until singling out this one kid and threatening to beat him up purely out of suspicion. Things are seconds away from turning violent, but that's when Hyung A starts to scream as dozens of ants crawl all over her body. She gets up from her chair and starts to jump around the room, clawing at her own skin in a desperate attempt to get them off. But in reality, there's nothing on her at all. She grabs a pen and starts to stab herself in the arm. Ji Yoon tries to stop her, only to be slashed across the face and knocked to the ground. The girl screams with terror as she starts to foam at the mouth, and her friend realizes that someone has switched out her medication. But it's too late, and the girl vomits blood before collapsing to the floor dead. Mr. Cha shows up for his second suspiciously timed appearance, and now the kids aren't letting it slide. With this guy demanding to know why he's always walking in just seconds after someone is killed. He gets right in the teacher's face, but Mr. Cha is ready for the smoke and drops him to the floor with a nasty right hook. The rest of the class looks on in stunned silence, but before they can react, someone cuts the lights, and that's when all hell breaks loose, until Mr. Cha finally gets his flashlight and orders them to remain calm and stay in their dorms while he goes to the maintenance area to bring the power back on. Back in their dorms, see he confesses that she and Taeyeon were actually stepsisters, but never embraced their relationship and didn't want the others in their class to find out about it. Now that she's gone, she feels guilty for pushing her sister away. Narei was Taeyeon's best friend and says that she was always angry at them for never telling her that they were sisters. Crying, see Yi tells her that she's sorry, even though she knows it's too late. Out in the hall, this girl Kyung Hee ends up locked out of her room. She bangs on the door, trying to get in, but nobody answers. And somewhere in the dark, another door creaks open. It's the class pervert. He invites her into his room, but she quickly gets creeped out and takes off with him following close behind. Meanwhile, this group of boys decide that they can't just sit around and wait to be killed, and head to the cafeteria where they find a box full of canisters of butane fuel. Along with Miss Park and one of the kids, Mr. Cha descends into the basement and makes his way to the breaker box. They reconnect the wires and manage to restore power, but when he flips the switch, he activates a small compressor that was rigged to a booby trap. He realizes that something is horribly wrong and yells at the student to get down, but the kid doesn't react in time, and a nail gun opens fire on them from the other side of the basement, emptying the belt into his body. He dies in his teacher's arms. Okay, Su Il here was a sharp student, but it looks like the nails were sharper. Of all the ways to be killed, this has to be one of the easiest to avoid. Seriously, a nail gun booby trap that requires you to be standing in the exact perfect place for it to work? If you get taken out by that, you probably weren't gonna survive the night no matter what happened. First of all, you're in a death game where you know someone is trying to kill you and you've just seen three of your classmates be taken out in brutal and creative ways. Suddenly, the power goes out, and the only way to turn it back on is to go down to the breaker box. This is the exact point where you have to be expecting a trap. As soon as those wires were connected and the power came back on, it was time to get to cover and wait to see what happened. Mr. Cha even figured it out and tried to warn him, but he just stood there like a deer in headlights. Get low, cover your head, and thank the Lord that you only accidentally activated a nail gun and not an IED. Even if you didn't react quickly enough to the first three, four, five nails that hit you, and let the booby trap empty its clip, then that's kind of on you. Next time when someone tells you to run, listen, and maybe you won't end up a victim of some deranged Bob the Builder. Coming soon to a theater near you, How to Beat's official Patreon. All the guts, all the blood, all the screams, plus nasty extras. How to Beat Patreon. Two times the shock, two times the terror, two times the subscription levels. Have a damn good day, and it only gets better.
Both levels bid you welcome to pre-sales for ghoulish official How to Beat merchandise and support the evil scientists behind the How to Beat videos. It only gets better subscribers are invited to the X-rated party. Ad-free and uncensored videos too repulsive for all audiences are available on demand. How to Beat's Patreon. In space, no one can hear you scream, but on Patreon, everyone can see you bleed. How to Beat's Patreon. Join us if you dare. Defeated, Mr. Cha arms himself with a hammer and sits down in the hallway to collect his thoughts. Someone approaches from the shadows, and he lunges up from his chair ready to bash their brains in. But it's only the girl Ji Yoon who points out that all of the students who've been killed were in on a secret that they both also know. He warns her to keep her mouth shut since they're the only ones left who know what really happened. But she says that there's one more person he's forgotten the pervert kid. The pervert kid captured pictures of what happened and blackmailed her for money in exchange for the photos. Since Ji Yoon is his best student, Mr. Cha also participated in the cover-up. Wanting to tie up any loose ends, he decides to hunt the pervert kid down and take him out. Searching around the building, he comes to the photography room and finds the kid lying with his head down on the desk. He raises his hammer to deliver the killing blow, but the kid looks up at him, revealing that he's already been stabbed in the chest. Horrified, Mr. Cha staggers back only to slip and fall in a huge pool of blood, the pervert dropping dead to the floor right next to him. As he gets back on his feet, he realizes that the room is full of photos of the very crime that he was trying to cover up and starts tearing the pictures down to destroy the evidence. He hurries around the room, eventually coming to a dryer full of hanging rolls of film. But as he tries to rip them down, someone approaches him from behind and pushes him aside. The classical music starts to play through the speakers again, and this time, the security camera shows Mr. Cha trapped in the dryer, the students running to the dark room to try and save his life. They see the pervert kid's body on the floor and their teacher locked inside of the dryer with the temperature rapidly climbing. The projector screen flashes through some of the photos marked with letters and this girl realizes that it's an anagram puzzle spelling out the code that will unlock the chamber and set Mr. Cha free if they can solve it in time. They scramble to figure it out while one of the boys tries to break the glass with no luck. Finally putting together the code, Memento Mori. She races to put it in, but inside Mr. Cha bursts into flames, exploding into a bloody mess from the heat before they can open the door. Okay, someone call the lunch lady, because I don't think barbecued Mr. Cha was supposed to be on the menu. It looks like he was preoccupied trying to cover something up. When you know a psycho killer is on the loose, and you've just walked into a room where you found a guy with a knife in his belly, is there ever a more important time to watch your back? As far as I can tell, there's only one entrance, and Mr. Cha here even had a hammer to protect himself with. Instead of worrying about destroying evidence, this would be the time to get ready for a brawl, and not leave yourself open to being shoved into a dryer. Now, when it comes to the kids trying to get him out, they really needed to remain calm and think the situation through instead of panicking. So how about trying to unplug it, geniuses? This wouldn't get Mr. Cha out, but it would stop the fire from getting any larger. Let's say for some reason that they couldn't unplug it or break down the door, and their only option was to enter the code before it was too late. Then what they should have done was immediately take the photos out of the projector. That way they could look at them all at once instead of having to see the letters appear one at a time. This way, they hopefully would have been able to figure out the password more quickly and saved their teacher's life. The thing about Mr. Cha is, he wasn't exactly the most innocent guy, which you've probably picked up on by now. After what we're about to find out, I might not have even bothered trying to set him free at all, but these kids still have a few more puzzle pieces to put together before they understand the truth about what's going on. Looking at the photos, they notice that everyone in the pictures is dead except for one student, Ji Yoon. While the others were distracted, she took off on her own to try and find a way out and ran into Miss Park out in the hallway. She begs for help, saying that she knows she's the next one to be killed, and finally admitting what really happened to Taeyeon two years ago. One rainy night, Ji Yoon, Yang Ran, Hyun A, JK, and Su Il were at school late working on their studies. They decided to take a break and cracked open a bottle of whiskey that she had stashed in her locker. After they polished off the bottle, JK started to brag about all of the girls that he hooked up with while visiting the US, and the conversation turned to Su Il, who admitted that he was still a virgin. The others started to make fun of him, and that's when they noticed Taeyeon in the showers, daring him to go in there and make a move. After some serious peer pressure from the group, 
He got mad and decided to go for it, pinning her to the floor while the others watched. Taehyun kneed him in the balls, knocking him off and threatening to report them all to the police. But ji said that his father is a prosecutor, and she'd lose her spot on the swim team if she told anyone what happened. Furious, Taehyun slapped her across the face and turned to walk away, but ji grabbed her by the hair and smashed her face into the pipe, causing the injuries that eventually killed her. She explains to Miss Park that she didn't mean to kill Taehyun, begging the teacher to take her to the police station so that she can confess. But what she doesn't realize is that the woman already knew the truth. Suddenly, a gloved hand reaches from behind and covers her mouth. Okay, wow. Who would have thought that our star student was actually a remorseless killer? It looks like you're about to get what's coming to you, but not before I have a chance to rub it in. ji you f***ed up. You were a star student with everything going for you good grades, support from your teachers, and probably guaranteed acceptance to the best schools in the country. All you had to do was stay out of trouble and not commit murder in the third degree, but here we are. I'd show you a little mercy if I could say that you just made a mistake and fell in with the wrong crowd, but the reality is that you were the ringleader of the whole operation, and the blame for all of this falls squarely on your shoulders. You may be at the top of your class and have friends with powerful parents, but that definitely doesn't give you the right to egg your buddies on to assault an innocent girl who was just minding her own business, only to smash her head into a pipe when she hits you with a well-deserved slap across the face. If you think that you're such a little badass, then square up for a fight instead of waiting until her back was turned like a coward, and then covering up your actions instead of doing the right thing and trying to get her some help. You may have thought that you got away free and clear, but two years later, it looks like someone's decided to take justice into their own hands. Not only are your friends getting killed, but you've put everyone in the school's lives at risk, all because you wanted to be a bully and pick on someone who never did you any wrong. Now you're the last one left on the kill list, and the maniac has you right where they want you, when your selfish and sociopathic behaviors end up getting your entire class trapped in a death game. There's only one thing that can be said. ji you have seriously f***ed up. The other kids run through the halls looking for ji and the security camera turns back on. This time, Miss Park appears on the screen, telling them that they have one last chance to escape alive. Their phones are locked in a safe in the gym. If they can open it in 10 minutes, they can use them to call for help. But if they can't, then they're all going to die. Most of the students immediately rush for the gym, while these three boys realize that Miss Park must be in the studio and decide to go after her instead. Upstairs, the mystery killer finally shows his face, patting Miss Park on the shoulder and telling her that she's done well. It turns out that Taeyeon's boyfriend, Young Boom, was at work on the night that she died. He received a strange text saying that she wanted to break up but couldn't get in contact with her afterwards and decided to go looking at the pool. That's where he found her lying on the floor covered in blood, only able to whisper the name Su Il before she died. As he tried to give her CPR, the swim coach saw him kneeling over her body, and she, along with Mr. Cha and the other students, threw him under the bus, causing him to be convicted of the killing and locked away in a mental hospital as he slowly started to lose his mind. Miss Park is actually his sister, who visited him while he was incarcerated and got a job as a teacher at the school to eventually help him execute his plan for revenge. He tells his sister to go, saying that he'll take care of the rest. As she walks down the stairs, the gang of boys attack her, bashing her over the head with a fire extinguisher and beating beating her to death. The rest of the kids make it to the gym, where they find ji tied to a wire that runs up to the ceiling and attaches to the key, realizing that in order to get into the safe, they'll have to sacrifice their classmate. While some of the students rush to untie her, the others start to jump for the key, dragging her across the room and hoisting her into the air. They let go for a moment, and she drops to the floor, but they're running out of time, and most of them are willing to let her die so that they can escape. While they're distracted, ji lunges for the key, and and the rest of the kids dogpile on top of her trying to snatch it away. In the struggle, one of the kids manages to get the key away, and they pull it towards the safe, flinging her back up towards the ceiling. These kids grab her by the feet and try to pull her down, but the others overpower them, finally making it into the safe as ji dangles way out of reach. They grab their phones and try to call for help, but the timer runs out and they lose service, the girl hanging dead from the ceiling. 
Okay, it looks like Ji Yoon found out what happens when you push people to the end of their rope. With the choice of trying to save her life or the lives of everyone else in the gym, I wouldn't have to think very hard about what side I was on. She's a bad person with a serious chip on her shoulder, and I'm absolutely sure that she'd sacrifice me without batting an eye if the shoe was on the other foot. If these naive kids were so determined to save her, then I can't imagine why in the hell they would think that jumping up and grabbing her by the ankles was going to do anything other than make her choke faster. What they should have done was exactly what the kids on the other side ended up doing to them, and charged at the crowd that was holding the key, knocking them over and breaking their grip so that Ji Yoon would lower back to the floor. Trying to rescue her was the honorable thing to do, I'll give them that. But to be perfectly honest, I would have been one of the first people pulling the key towards the safe with no mercy. It is a death game after all, and I'd be willing to sacrifice people much more innocent than her if it meant that I'd get to live. While they're all busy in the gym, the killer sets the building on fire and they realize that they need to get out now before they all burn to death. The kids rush back to the front door, and this time, the boys bust the lock with an axe, jamming the cans of butane into the gate before puncturing them all and throwing a lighter, blowing it right off the wall and opening up their escape path. Everyone rushes outside, but Narei realizes that Si He isn't with them, and she and Quan Wu hurry back inside to try and rescue her. Si He stands at the top of the high dive where she sees a hallucination of her dead sister falling into the pool. Suddenly, the killer appears behind her, wrapping his hands with a metal chain. He grabs her by the throat, holding her out over the water, but there's still one last secret left to reveal. On the night that her sister was killed, Si He was there, but did nothing to stop the others since she didn't didn't want to lose her place among the popular kids. Her friends come running to save her, but Young Boom ties the weighted chain around her ankle and grabs her as he dives into the pool. Quan Wu pulls him away, and she and Narei try to untie the chain, but it's wrapped too tight, and her friends have to go back up for air. Just as she's about to drown, the ghost of her sister rises from below and sets her free, before taking Young Boom and descending into the darkness. She rises to the surface, and Quan Wu gives her CPR, saving her life. It seems like a happy ending, but just as they're about to leave, someone approaches them from out of sight, and they look up, terrified. The nightmare isn't over yet, after all. But what would you do? If you were trapped in a school overnight, and people started dying left and right, could you trust the students, or trust the staff? Or would you have to trust yourself to figure out who is causing all the mayhem? Thank you so much for watching. Leave a like and subscribe, and check out our How to Beat playlist for more videos just like this. This is a reminder that we also upload on Wednesdays and Saturdays. And be sure to check out that new Kill Plan series that just dropped. It's fire! Be sure to check out the Patreon for that new How to Beat merch that's in there. And oh yeah, have a damn good day.